Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and we're working on Let It Snow, Graphic 45's latest release. And we are on page uh, four and we're also gonna um, build page five at the same time. They're mirror images of each other. This is um, a, a flat page design that I haven't done before. So it's gonna be a little bit different, which I always try to think of something new for you guys to do. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're actually going to cut into the designer paper and do some scoring on here and it's all going to become a little bit clearer um, once uh, we construct some of this because the, the goal is to have um, to create this blue frame. So I'm going to bring this up close and uh, show you where my score lines are or my pencil lines are and I'm also going to tell you what they are. So you're going to start with um, an eight by six inch piece of designer paper. And then you're going to mark a half inch in from the edge on both the left and right hand sides. And then you're gonna mark, and I'm trying to tip it so you can see the lines, three quarters of an inch on the top and bottom. And then we are gonna cut three of the four sides. Okay, and I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife and my metal ruler here. And because I don't have a pattern, it doesn't really matter which way I'm turning it, but they are gonna open away from each other. So if you use something that has a directional pattern, you, you might want to set them side by side the way they're gonna go in the book before you do any cutting. So you make sure you're cutting open the right side, the correct side. I say right, but I don't, I don't mean directional, I mean correct. Okay, and I have to focus because it's very hard for me to see my pencil lines in this light, okay. Okay, see how we did a, a slit right here from a half inch from the top to a half inch from the bottom. Actually, it's left and right, but I'm rotating it around. Now we're gonna cut on this line and then we'll cut again on the bottom and we'll have this uh, basically a frame cut out. Okay, now we're gonna cut along this line. I went to a nice dinner with my husband and I drank too much coffee afterwards so now my hands feel jittery. Okay, so there we go. So this is what you should have, okay? And I've already done one, so I'm gonna show you what the finished one looks, well not finished, but the in progress one. So this is gonna be page five, this is gonna be page, nope, got the other way around. I'm gonna do page five, four here, page five here. Yeah, that's right. So I've, I've done this already. So again, it was six by eight. You're gonna come in a half inch from the left and right side and three quarters of an inch off the top and bottom. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take it at intact like, like it is and we're gonna set it in our scoreboard. And then the side that we did not cut through where we have a line, we're gonna put a score line. <clears throat> because we're going to want to fold that over, okay? Now we're gonna rotate it around and then you're gonna score three one inch segments. So because we're coming in a half inch, we're gonna score at one and a half and you're just scoring the piece that we've cut out. You're not scoring the frame. One and a half, two and a half, and three and a half, okay? So this is what we should have. We should have a score line over here where it meets the frame. 
then you should have a, a one, a one, and a one. So one inch, one inch, one inch. Okay. Now I have to think about how this works, so it's going to work this way. Okay. So as you're, um, the, we're going to fold these. These are going to have pa pages attached to them, and it's going to pull underneath. So I'm going to fold these like so. And we're going to have a pull mechanism that's going to pull it and it's going to make these flaps go. Um, I have to make sure I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and burnish these down. And I, I kind of did it slowly. Um, I'm trying to prevent my paper from cracking. Uh, but if you do get a little bit of cracking, just put some uh, ink on your edges, which is what I did on this one already. <clears throat> also, if when you're cutting through, I didn't think about this, but if, when you're cutting your papers to use here, if you cut it, if you score against the grain, it's going to be a lot less likely to crack. So this one didn't crack, this one did. So I must have been against the grain here and with the grain here. Okay. Tighten it up a little. And then one more. But again, you can cover cover that up very easily with your ink. Okay, now I'm gonna go and ink my edges all the way around. Looks like I did that before I cut it. You don't have to worry about inking any of this because it's not gonna be exposed. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach something here so that it'll pull all the way through. So the piece that we're going to attach is, I think I'm missing a piece. Yes, I am. So it needs to be, nope, here it is. It needs to be seven and a half by five, seven and a half by five. So it's gonna be wider than what we've cut here and a little bit longer so it sticks out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull everything through like, like so. I'll go ahead and burnish that into place. And I can see I got a little bit of cracking so I'll put some ink on that. Okay, now, we're going to tape this directly to, I gotta make sure I've got enough room. Yeah. Okay. We're going to tape this right here and we're just going to use um, clear uh, scotch tape. Oops. That didn't help. Ah. Okay. So we're going to center it. just using my grid to center it. I'm going to tape it together. It should not overlap. It should just be butted together. Okay. And so when you're done, you fold it and you've got the black behind it and the black is going to become the pull strip. Okay. Oh, I forgot we need to decorate this. I didn't cut any paper for that yet. Okay. So, so far this is what we have. The next thing we're going to do is adhere this to a, a black frame. So we are going to glue down, avoiding this space right here. So we'll glue these edges and then center it on here. And this piece is eight and one eight by six and one eight. So it just makes a nice frame. And was there something I wanted to do? No, that's it. I think we're good. Okay, so lay it down flat. Avoid the black cardstock because that's the mechanism that needs to move. And I recommend uh, glue here. I, tr I did my prototype with tape and the, um, the slide kept getting hung up on the tape. So I really do recommend glue. But again, stay away from your black cardstock. Okay. Oh, I think 
my, I think I need to return that. Hmm, it's too big. Let me double check my measurements. That's six by eight. Well, it's right, but it sure seemed like it was off. off. It's not as, as wide as I thought. It's a little tricky because these, these narrow pieces want to slide around on you and not go in straight. Okay, I think I need to trim that off. So I originally did six and one eighth and it's too wide. So I'm just going to take a sliver off and I'm going to do it with my ruler and this. in your trimmer if you wanted to as well. Oops, that's a little bit too much, but that's okay. I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so now we have this. And because we only glued the sides down, we're going to be able to reach in here. And pull out. There we go, it was glued a little bit, like so. Okay, so we're just going to um, work that a couple of times. I pulled it out a little too far. Okay, I'm gonna put a little more glue here on the corner. <clears throat> okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to glue down our base to the pocket page. This whole thing is going to get glued centered here. And I got to pay attention to what I'm doing because I want the pull tab to be away from the spine. So I'm not pulling it into the into the page next to it. Okay. I want that to flow a little more freely and it will as soon as I glue this back down. Okay. Flatten that back out. We'll glue this centered on, on the page. You can measure it, but I'm just eyeballing. We're going to start attaching uh, pages to this. So the first panel that we're going to apply to these score lines is seven by five. Seven by five. Now, it's hard to see because of the light, but there's a score line here, 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 and here. So the first one is gonna get glued down to this very first part. Now, when you apply this, you wanna make sure that the edge 
is right next to the score line. You can't go over the score line or the flip mechanism won't work. So it has to be right up to, okay, and the idea is you want it centered top to bottom. So I'm actually gonna turn it sideways. So I'm gonna apply glue to the inside part of the first one inch score line or score space or I don't know how you want to put it. Okay and then we're going to take this edge and put it just up to where that score line is. Do not go over it or your page won't work or your flip won't work. Okay so there is our first mechanism. We're going to let that dry a little bit. And while it's drying, we're going to go ahead and make our second panel, and it is six by five. Pull out our tab. Easier said than done. <laughs> it's actually on the top. There it is. Okay. And we're going to pull it out to expose the next score line. And we're going to add glue here. Staying inside uh, both score lines. Now we're gonna add, I'm gonna make sure everything's right side up. We're gonna add this one. Again, you want it centered top to bottom. <clears throat> and then you wanna make sure that it's lined up with the piece just ahead of it, okay? So then we're gonna go one more. And, and while I do that, I'm just making sure that it's lining up still. So far it looks good. Okay, now we're ready for the next one. The next one is a five by five. Okay, again, we're gonna place it right here, just like so. sideways to make sure I'm staying straight with um, the panels that I've already laid out. Looks good. I want to work kind of quickly because if I need to adjust it, I need to do it before my glue dries and it looks good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and burnish that into place. And then our last one will be four by five. Four by five. <clears throat> okay. Now this one's a little bit tricky. You're only going to do one inch and there's no mark for it. So what I'm using is the edge of this flap, I know I need to put glue here down. Okay, a little too much on the edge. Okay. Same thing, I'm gonna go right up to the edge, straighten everything out, make sure it's all pressed into place. Thing 
what I should have done before we put it in is we need to put some designer paper here. And that designer paper is gonna really help stiffen this up and help that whole mechanism work a little bit better. So I need to pick out some design paper here and then I need to get my B sides ready for these three flaps and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, everyone, I lined up some paper to finish out page four. And like I said, we're gonna do the same thing on page five. It's just gonna be a mirror image. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and stiffen up um, the, pull, the, the pull tab here. Tab is not really the right word, but the pull mechanism. Uh, eight by eight, I'm using eight by eight here. <clears throat> I'm going to slide that in. It's going to go in about a quarter of an inch, maybe. I think I need to put a lot more glue on it so it'll slide. And again, you could have done this before we installed it. It might have been a little bit easier, but it's not really that big of a deal to do it afterwards. I didn't have any trouble with that at all. Okay, and now we're going to start uh, decorating the B side of all these flaps. We're going to do this. Um, this is uh, page four, build four. Page five, build five. I'm actually building the album in um, the sequence of the pages, which is rare, but that's what I'm doing this time. But I'll go ahead and reference that in the title of the video so you know, because that's not always the case. <clears throat> okay. okay. We want this to go. Oh. There we go. Go to the next page. I'm going to use this nice bright green, which looks good with our birds. option to go solid or pattern. <sighs> I think I'm going to do, you know what, I think I cut that a little shy, but it'll be okay. I think I'm going to do snowflakes up. Solid would look good too. Solid always makes a nice border around a photo. even big enough you could do some color blocking here if you wanted. Let me keep it nice and simple. Okay now the last thing is I want to, oh I should have left one of these sides open. Shoot. I'm going to put something on here to make it easier to grab and I think it's just going to be a simple circle. Um, Where's my circle punch? Yeah, here we go. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do a one inch punch. I don't like that. Let me get a piece of solid glue somewhere. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, do a one inch punch. One for page four, one for page five. Okay, here we go. Yeah, ink those. I'm gonna actually cardstock back them as well. Now I did this in my one of my videos, but I can't remember what it was. Um, I have a hard time fussy cutting sometimes and getting it nice and even, especially if I'm fatigued. I'm sure you guys have the same issue. So what I do is I'll just glue it on the the back black background. And then I'm going to show you a cheat that will help. It's not perfect, but it helps. Okay, there we go. Now I don't have um, 
a punch that will make a tight enough border around this and to make it consistent with what you see, borders you see elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take uh, this tool and I'm gonna trace the circle and it's gonna create um, sort of an embossed um, path around the circle and that'll help me stay on track. Now, if you've got some foam or something soft to put behind it, it'll help. Um, and then when I get done tracing this, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay. Now, let me see if I can get the light on it just right. Okay, there it is. So you can see where I've gone around it and created an emboss, an emboss layer. I'm gonna use that as my guide to trim around the circles. You can obviously trace anything uh, to get this essentially the same result. This sort of guideline to help you cut around it. <clears throat> And by tracing it on the same side as the pattern paper, it sort of pushes the black down and it'll even create more dimension when you look at it instead of raising it up to the same level as the designer paper. It's not perfect, but it, it helps a lot. The key is to sort of hold it so that the light creates, you know, that outline. One side's always better than the other. So then you want to look at um, look at over, try to straighten out anything that you're uncomfortable with. And that looks pretty good. This side is not as nice as this side, so I'm going to glue it in this way. And it is going to go right there, half and half. Oops. <laughs> That's not good. There we go. Clean up my glue. And then I'm just gonna center it here. I'm just doing an eyeball. We'll let that dry for a minute. Make sure the glue didn't squish out anywhere. Now when you go to push this back in, it's gonna to wanna to hang up a little bit. So you might have to maneuver it a little bit when you're pushing it in. We'll see. <clears throat> There's our little tab. I keep pulling it out too far. So I made this six and a quarter. Um, I think if I had it to do over again, I would do it uh, six and a half. And that way I won't get, it won't come and get hung up like it keeps doing because I'm pulling it too far out. And uh, another quarter inch would have solved that problem. So on page five, that's what I'll do. Okay. And um, there's no magnets holding this in place. It's just kind of resting on its own. Okay, let's go ahead and do page five. It should go a little bit quicker. So first, I'm gonna do this a little bit different order. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down, get it out of the way. And since I pre-cut everything, it's gonna go pretty darn quick. Your second one will go faster too if you cut two, two of everything the first go round. So I shouldn't have to do any measuring, just. There we go. Okay. So again, this is um, six by eight. Then you're going to come in a half inch on the left and right hand side draw a line, come down three quarters of an inch top uh, from the top down and from the bottom up, you're gonna cut three sides, okay? The hinged side is the side that you're gonna have on the right hand side of the page because this is gonna roll under and we're going to attach this seven and a half by five inch uh, paper to become the pull tab, okay? So the way we're gonna attach it is we're gonna fold this over. 
and then we're going to just butt line these up end to end and this is going to be centered okay just like so so i'm going to put a piece of tape here or a couple pieces of tape i think don't overlap end to end because it needs to it's going to need to fold right there where it's attached All right. So now we're going to feed it through, fold it back, like so. I'm going to ink. I'm going to ink this edge that's exposed, so the white's not screaming at us. Okay. Now what I did didn't do the first time was um, put a designer uh, piece of paper here and I'm going to do that first and that needed to be what did I use I used oh, maybe I didn't cut one uh, the diamond pattern from the 8x8 collection pack yeah. okay. so last time I did Okay. When it's fully deployed, you want to make sure that um, it doesn't get hung up when you're pulling it through. So let's say seven, six, six and a quarter, six and a half. We're going to do six and a half. Six and a half by four and seven eighths. I might as well do seven. Okay, we're gonna ink it and do it. Again, this is from the 8x8 collection pack. I went ahead and made it seven inches because I was gonna have such a small scrap, I wouldn't use it anyway. So that's up to you, and you should definitely have the same papers available um, that I did. Okay, now we're ready to glue this down to its frame, which I don't know what I did with it, but there should be a black frame around this. I'm looking for that piece of paper right now. I don't know what I've done with it. See, did I? Is it one of these? Nope, those are all flaps. Okay, I need to trim out um, a piece of paper, black cardstock, to frame this out. Okay, that looks right. I'm gonna go ahead and move this. So we're gonna flip this over. We're going to apply glue to these edges. Stay away from your black cardstock. Okay. Two 
too much glue on the corner. Make sure when you're applying it to, to the mat that this piece is completely flat. There we go. I'll tell you what, what I trim that to. Yeah, that's... The black mat is eight, eight and one eighth by six and one eighth. Okay. All right, now the next thing we want to do, oops, that needs to stay. Let's go ahead and trim this out so we've got our pull tab. We'll get it attached. And then we'll put the whole thing on the pocket page and then we'll add the flats. This way, we want to pull away from the spine. Center. Okay, now we've got all of our, our mats ready. This panel is five by seven. It's going to go right here on this edge, centered. pencil marks I need to erase, but I'll get back to that later. Okay. Okay, the next one is six by five. Six by five. Can't remember. Okay. 
Okay, we want it centered here. We're gonna make sure that we're in line with the one that we've already installed. So we're gonna line them up top to bottom. The next one is five by five. Okay, I'm just double checking to make sure it's all lined up. It's our chance to uh, sort of wiggle it into place if we need to. Okay, the last one is four by five. Okay, now I'm gonna use this edge here and here, and then I'm gonna put glue right there. So I'm not gonna glue the whole thing down. Although, I'm not sure if there's an issue why, why I couldn't, but I, that's just the way I learned how to do it. So it could, you could, it might be an issue. Yeah, I can't glue the whole thing down, Never mind. So just like the others, we're only gonna cover um, about an inch. Okay. Okay, and I'm closing it to make sure everything's lined up and it's um, gonna be covered when I pull my tab, and it is. You know what, I think you could glue the whole thing down. I don't think it, you have to just do one inch. Let's see if I have, if this was glued. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't create a problem. So we can do that. I'm just gonna glue that one edge down. Yeah, let's, do, let's pull page four in and do the same thing. Actually, it makes it work better if you glue the whole thing down. So let's, so if you haven't, do that. Okay, now it's time to do the B-sides. I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is a, I haven't done this before. Um, I've done something similar but it actually was a cascade. I didn't have it where the where the panels were different sizes. So I kind of like it. Um, let's see, which way did I go with my stripes? 
I went up and down. This is from 12 by 12. You can tell by the scale of the uh, cut aparts. I think I forgot to mention that on page four. a lot of blue. <laughs> okay, that is page five, page four and five. Okay, and we have our pull tabs. And of course, it'll work a lot better when it's actually attached to the book. You don't have to be holding everything in place like I'm doing because <laughs> the book will be holding it. Okay, that's page four and five. I hope you guys enjoyed this new design. Um, I've seen it before, but I've not done it before. And like I said, the ones I've done, it's it's where it's cascaded. It's not where this covers up the whole thing. And I kind of like this, because then you can feature, you know, something special here. And, um, you know, it could be any number of designs. These are from the 8x8. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is from the 8x8. That's a pattern in solid. 12x12, 12x12. And the blue is 12 by 12. Okay, there we go. I'll be back soon with page five.